So in today's video, we are going to be looking at the Bitcoin difficulty and seeing how this affects solo miners when it actually drops off. Now, this is in relation to the Bitcoin hash rate and the Bitcoin difficulty. So they're both intertwined also into the Bitcoin price at the current time. So normally what happens is the price will go down, people will come off the network and the difficulty drops. And that makes it easier, in theory, to mine a solo block with one of these solo miners. So in today's video, we're going to be explaining the kind of relationship between it and seeing how much easier it is to actually mine a solo block. It's not that much easier, but it does give you a slight advantage and also what times to take advantage of these difficulty drops so that you can have, I guess, the best possible chance to actually hit a Bitcoin block. So let's head over to the computer and get into the video. So as I said at the start of the video, today we're going to be looking at the increased chance of solo miners hitting a block in the future as the Bitcoin difficulty goes down. So if you haven't seen our previous video on Bitcoin difficulty explained, I'll leave it linked in the description. It covers basically everything about the Bitcoin difficulty and how it's calculated. And that will give you an idea of how this kind of ties into it being easier to actually mine a solo block in the future as the Bitcoin difficulty goes up and down. So it's all based off of one thing, and that is the hash rate. So Bitcoin's hash rate is measured against two weeks, and that changes the difficulty. So if it's higher than the last two weeks, then that will bring the difficulty higher. And if it's lower for the last two weeks on average, it will bring the difficulty lower. And you can see this kind of overlaid on each other if we look at these two charts. So right here you have the Bitcoin difficulty chart and then right here you have the hash rate chart. So you can see here back in the 2021 FTX scandal, there was a lot of hash rate that dropped off the network and subsequently the difficulty went down. It went from around 25 trillion down to around 13 trillion. So in that period, the difficulty basically halved and so did the hash rate on the network. So when the hash rate actually comes off the network, the difficulty does adjust and becomes lower. So for solo miners, that's going to make it easier for us to actually hit a block because the difficulty is going to be at a lower rate. Now, it also means that there's less people mining on the network. So we can see that in the Bitcoin hash rate. So if you go to here at the current time that we're looking at here, you can see that there's jumps up and down in difficulty, notably here at 126T, it dropped all the way down to 116. And that was probably because of this hash rate spike down to here, which was around 600 exahash. So it does take an average of the two week moving average, and then it updates for the difficulty here. So you can see there's a massive drop off in difficulty, and it's probably because of this drop off in hash rate. So the Bitcoin network hash rate had around half of the hash rate taken off the network which is quite a substantial amount of miners that are out there. So that means that there's less miners out there, which means more chance for the solo miners to hit a block. So there's a couple of things that actually affect the Bitcoin hash rate. One of them is going to be the price. So if Bitcoin is going lower, it will mean that these miners or these mining farms don't have enough money to be profitable anymore. As the Bitcoin price goes down, you can see the hash rate dropping off. And we can even see this back in 2021, where the same thing happened as Bitcoin's price went down. And then subsequently, we have a massive drop off in hash rate because it's not profitable to mine Bitcoin anymore. And we're kind of seeing the same thing as we're going on in time with this in the past year of hash rate that we see by here. So you can see that the hash rate is climbing, but it's also dipping in and out as the Bitcoin price goes up and down. And that's just basically mining farms shutting off. So this was probably a really bad time in terms of the Bitcoin price. We could overlay it onto here, but I'm assuming that the Bitcoin price was really low. So it was unprofitable for a lot of miners. And judging by the numbers, probably around half of the miners actually dropped off the network, which means that half of the miners weren't profitable. And then as Bitcoin's price goes up, you can see that you have a bunch of hash rate jumping onto the network. And you can also see if we scroll down into here, there has been a drop off in the hash rate down to around 852. So in these periods, a lot of miners that were previously turned on have become unprofitable. And you can also see this adjusted in the difficulty. 
Now, a lot of people with smaller coins like GPU mineable coins and even the smaller ASIC coins look for these times to actually start solo mining when the hash rate comes off of a network and the difficulty drops, which means it will be easier for those ASIC miners or those GPU miners to actually mine coins. And a lot of people can take advantage of that. Obviously, solo miners can take advantage of it because we don't necessarily have to worry about the power cost. So that's the main thing that is cutting off a lot of these miners out of the hash rate and then dropping the difficulty downwards because the power cost doesn't actually reflect into the Bitcoin price. So they might have a margin that they need to hit. And if it falls below that margin in terms of the Bitcoin price, then they're not going to be profitable. So they'll turn off their miners. And when we come to electricity prices across the globe, you can see that there's quite a lot of them that are relatively high, but even in United States, you have 18 cents per kilowatt hour. And then as you go down, you have some sitting in the sub 10 cent range, but not a lot. I know in the United States, there's kind of pockets of it. Texas being the main one where you have way lower electricity prices. And those are probably the most profitable farms in the US. But even here on the newest release of the Bitmain Antminer S23, which is going to be the most efficient miner out there currently, which not a lot of people have. The break-even price for the cents per kilowatt hour is only 16 cents per kilowatt hour. So the only people that could actually mine this on an average would be all of these countries by here, and that would cut out the rest of them. So if you had any mining farms in this area, those would get cut off of the network. And the same thing goes if you look at the rest of the miners here. So we have 16 cents per kilowatt hour, and basically every miner apart from the most efficient and newest miners out there are unprofitable every day. So that's when we see the hash rate dropping off of the network. Over time though, a lot of people have gone into deals where they can get their electricity prices lower. So a lot of mining farms have set that up. But if you're mining with the Bitex, as it only costs around, I wouldn't even say 10 cents per day, but probably five cents per day, depending on your electricity price, it's pretty much negligible for you. So you get a chance at hitting a Bitcoin block because you don't need to worry about the power cost. And that gives you a bit of an edge when the difficulty drops off the network. Now it's not a massive edge because the difficulty continues to rise as electricity prices get lower or you have more efficient machines coming on and it's directly related to hash rate. So if you were to, so if you were to look at the hash rate, you can see that there's probably a peak somewhere which shows you how much was actually on the network overall. So right there is the peak that we've had, and that's 1.28 Zeta hash. That means that there's probably around that much hash rate in terms of machines that you would want to turn on floating out there on the Bitcoin network. But over time, people turn on and off their hash rate, or they might be going through maintenance. And that gives you the opportunity to have a slight edge in solo mining with the solo miners. So the difference between 116 and 126 is around a tenth of the difficulty, which effectively means you have to hit a lower threshold to mine a solo block on Bitcoin. And this actually works out well for the people that are also pool mining on Bitcoin. So if the hash rate drops, you'll get more of the reward of the network because there's less people out there. So in time, if you are pool mining, you should see different payout numbers as you go on through the days, even if you're using these smaller miners like the Nerd QX to just gain some profitability or the Avalon Nano, you should see different payout numbers depending on the Bitcoin hash rate. As there's more competition, the hash rate goes higher. If there's less competition, you should get a higher payout because there's less people out there. So that's how the mining pools will calculate your payout is based on the hash rate on the network and how much shares you submitted to the network. And because there's less people actually mining, you're going to have a higher proportional share to the whole Bitcoin pool or the Bitcoin mining pool. So that's how we can actually take advantage as solo miners. Obviously, it's not really a massive thing because we started solo mining back, I think, around here. And the current network difficulty was 103 trillion. And in the year, it's done up to about 150 trillion. But if you bring this chart backwards, you can see it is rising at a rapid rate. So it's going to become harder and harder over time to solo mine a Bitcoin block. And that's where the competition kind of comes in, as you would need to have more efficient chips in the solo miner boards. For example, the Node QX has the S21, 
but eventually we'll probably see S23 chips being used in the Bitax. And that's going to give you a little bit more advantage as you have a higher hash rate plus the efficiency is better. As I said, we don't really worry about the electricity cost as solo miners, but it gives you an advantage if you see dips off in the difficulty. For example, by here, you have 87 and it dips off to 79, or by here, 126, dipping down into 116. And even if we bring it all the way down to here, the highest difficulty that we've seen on the network is 155, so that's a massive spike, and then it's actually come down to 148 trillion. So when you see these dips off in the difficulty, it always gives you a slight extra chance to solo mine a Bitcoin block. Now it is all based on luck, but the last example I'll give, let's say that you mined a share for 120 trillion. At this difficulty, that wouldn't net you a block. But if you drop down to here and you mine that, you would actually gain a block from that. So that's how we can take advantage. As I said, the chances are still low, but you just have a little bit more odds because there's a lower difficulty threshold to hit on solo mining. So that's how you can take advantage of solo mining Bitcoin difficulty. And you can also do this with other coins like Digibyte or even Bitcoin Cash, as they have varying difficulties that go up and down quite a lot. For example, you can see here on the Bitcoin Cash, you have a massive dip off from 765G all the way down to 309G. So you can see a massive drop there. That would have been a good time to mine on Bitcoin Cash. And there's also more rapid drops that you see here. So if you see this, and there's also a drop by here. So if you see this drop off, then it's probably a good time to start switching over if you're not worried about trying to hit a Bitcoin block. There are certain times where if the difficulty drops a lot, like for example here, it would be beneficial to start mining Bitcoin Cash. Now this difficulty moves at the same rate as Bitcoin, but there is one out there that we can see for Digibyte, and that looks like this. So this is even in the past couple of days. So Digibyte's difficulty does jump up and down quite often. And if you just go to the last week, you can see there's quite wild swings. So 576 million all the way down to 49 million, which would be pretty easy to hit. And then there's also a difficulty jump by here. We don't really see any massive spikes downwards, maybe from here downwards to here. So 89 million by there. But you can see that this adjusts quicker than the Bitcoin network. So I think this is running off a 12 hour window for the hash rate going up and down and it adjusts based off of that. So you might find more success when the Digibyte difficulty starts to drop off. So you can apply this to basically any other SHA-256 coin or any other coin that you want it to look at in terms of GPU mining or other ASIC mining. And that would be mainly for if you wanted to solo mine something, you would look for the difficulty to drop off and then give yourself a chance to solo mine that coin. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Make sure you like this video and subscribe for more content like this.